I wasn't joking. Welcome back to the kitchen and we are canning again in the middle of winter. That's exciting for me. Um, nothing like plenty of projects to keep you busy, right? When it's the dead of winter and you can't get out in your garden. But I mentioned in my pantry video, I have potatoes sprouting and they're not totally squishy um, so much that they're not usable. So we're gonna do two projects today. We're gonna can up these potatoes so I don't lose them, the ones that are still nice and firm. And the ones that are taken off on me, I am going to make homemade tater tots. That's something that we always buy at the store. I'm gonna say, hey, let me teach myself how to make my own homemade tater tots. We'll freeze them. We'll try some out tonight in our air fryer and see if they don't work out great. So I'm excited about this. I've got a lot of prep work to do before I get back with you guys. I gotta wash these potatoes peel them all and then we'll come back together and talk about next steps. Alrighty, all washed. And before I get too far in, I'm just gonna add a splash of lemon juice to this bowl of water. And that's just gonna help the potatoes from browning while I work them. And all I'm gonna do is peel them. The ones that um, I'm going to can, um, I'm going to just parboil. All right, I got most of the firm ones peeled and chopped. I'm going to parboil these for five minutes. Rinse them really good. So I'll probably rinse them two or three times to get as much starch out as I can. And that just helps um, your jars to not have too much of that cloudy starch sediment in your canned potatoes. And these will all just be regular canned potatoes. I still have um, about half a bowl and that are the softer red ones. And we will peel those next. And I'm going to run them food through my food processor on a fine grate. And I will share the tater tot recipe with you guys. I won't get much into this canning of potatoes, um, but I'll at least show you the end result. And I have a whole video on just canning potatoes that I'll link here for you guys. So let me get these on to a boil. And I know some of you will probably ask, what kind of potatoes did I grow? This year I grew, I always grow Kennebec, so they're my go-to. And Kennebec definitely store the best. The majority of these in here are Kennebec. Um, no sprouting at all on any of the Kennebec. I also grew for the first time this year russets. And the russets, for, a lot of those are russets in here for the most part were firmish you know maybe just a tiny give to the outer layer um, and a couple of those just had the starts of little eyes on them but the red ones are red norlands and they're not meant for a storage potato um, normally when i grow those and i do grow those every year i immediately process those into potatoes o'brien um, and I just didn't take the time to do that this year, um, which is fine. I'm excited to have this opportunity to try a new recipe with you guys. So let me get over there, get those peeled, and I'll be back with you guys here shortly. All right, we are at time for grading. Todd is in here with me. and He's finishing the last of the peels. Uh, <laughs> I do still have a few fingertips left. I have couple band-aids on but we're gonna get going I've got my fine grater attachment on here and yeah let's do it That's about it. Do you have many more? A couple more? Two. Two. Okay. Um, I think we are at the point, you know, what I had to do was I forgot how fast potatoes can brown when exposed to oxygen. So I just dumped some of my lemon juice water 
in the bowl that I was grating in. Um, and then I'll get all the ingredients ready and drain and pat these dry really, really well and mix it all together. So let me get my mess cleaned up. I'll be right back with you. I'm just gonna say this makes every homesteading wife so, so proud. He said, do I just need to pack these jars? I'm like, yes. It's going good. <laughs> he said, they're, they're hot. <laughs> yeah, they're really hot. I was thinking I'll just use my hands and scoop them up, but. Yeah, you're gonna just have to wipe the lids. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I found my recipe. With vinegar. Yeah. Um, I found my recipe and we're gonna get started. Alrighty, I have my potatoes rinsed, drained, patted really, really well, got as much moisture out as I could. Um, I'm adding probably mm, two and a half, three, we'll go three, heaping tablespoons of flour. Um, we'll do the same for garlic powder. It's gonna make a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a hundred of these little tiny potatoes yeah. doesn't feel like very much until they're all in one place at the same time. Yeah. Pepper, uh, maybe one and a half. And then some good Laurie seasoning salt. All right, we'll mix all that together. And that's really supposed to be it. And then you're supposed to be able to form them into patties. <laughs> we shall see. If not, we can always freeze it and make hash browns, huh? Yeah. I think that's it. It feels weird that there's no liquid or egg or anything. Yeah, I mean like, hmm. So I'm not happy with it. But they're not, it doesn't hold together like a tater tot would. I mean, kind of, but I don't know. It seems like there needs to be some kind of a, some kind of a binding agent, yeah. some kind of liquid Well, that's something. what the flour is supposed to be, I think. It'll act like the binding agent, but I mean, they hold together a little bit okay, but I guess I don't want to be unhappy with it. So what I'm going to do is instead of making tater tots, sorry guys, I'm just going to bag this up into individual quart size bags, get all the air out, freeze it, and we'll use it as hash browns. All right, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. Todd's getting these um, jars in the canner and we will fry some up like hash browns to at least let you know how we like them. Um, so if this is something you want to do with your potatoes from the garden, and you don't even have to wait till they go bad. Like I said, every year I typically will freeze up some potatoes O'Brien and um, see there's extra liquid in here. So this is giving me the opportunity to get some of that out too. Ooh. And I'll stick these down in the freezer and we'll have breakfast. I didn't hear you click it. Uh, before I throw these in the freezer, I ended up with four quart bags of hash browns, minus what Todd's cooking. Got a carbon steel pan with a lot of nice hot butter.
I don't know if it cooked all the way. Let's see. Smell good. I want to sit down though. <laughs> it's you want to sit down? Eight o'clock. Oh yeah. <laughs> and rest, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Good. Yeah. Maybe it cook a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I cooked it fast and hot at the very beginning and then just lowered it down to almost all the way to low. And it cooked for what, 10 minutes, eight minutes or so? I think it's perfect. I don't like mine. This is perfect. I like that crunchy outer edge when it's still soft in the middle. Good flavor though, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good flavor. Did you add anything else to it? I'll put a little pepper on it. Um, more pepper. So not bad. I'm going to have eight quarts of potatoes, right? That's mm -hmm. what you finished. And yeah. four quart bags of shredded hash browns. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, had I not managed that, I would have lost that food. So that food is now shelf stable or freezer ready for quite a while yet to go. Mm -hmm. So just give you some tips if you're just starting out how to manage a pantry and what to think about when planting potatoes, what kind of potatoes are more shelf stable than others. So thanks guys for coming along and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye guys. Mm, salty. Yeah, it is salty. You just cook it in butter? Yeah. It's a good cracked egg with a runny yolk in the middle. Mm. Mm -hmm. And some onions. Yeah. Well, I think it's the flavor is good enough without the onions, I think. Mm. It reminds me of like, should have this this weekend. The little shredded potatoes are so long, it feels like you're eating like pasta almost. Mm. Like noodles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good, but I'll let you eat the rest, otherwise I'll swell up. <laughs> I think I put too much salt, but you probably like it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Salty. Okay, one more bite. I'm done.